everybody. Welcome back. This is Around the Ether Cooler, our weekly MTG podcast where we're just going to be talking about our favorite game. Uh, of course, this week we're joined as always by Nita Hone, Mike, and Nicole Badwolf MTG. And I am Simon, the lucky host. How are you guys doing this week? Good. Awesome. Good. Wow, fantastic. All right, so we're going to kick right into it because we don't have a lot of time this podcast, but there are some interesting changes for Magic the Gathering Arena and some Vorthos stuff that we really want to get to. Uh, first, we want to talk about Magic the Gathering Arena and some format changes or format additions to the game. Hopefully spice it up a little bit. Uh, we do know that they're looking at a couple of new additional formats for us to play. Of course, we know that Singleton's already, already been around. It's actually up there right now. Uh, they're probably going to make that a permanent format rather than the rotation that it's on. But they're also looking at Momir Vig and what was the other one? Popper. Uh, standard popper. <laughs> popper. Stan- OK, <laughs> so I lost. I completely forgot about popper because I'm thinking to myself, well, popper and card is not limited to standard, but arena is a standard focused game. So standard popper. Let's let's start with that real quick. I want to get you guys opinion. Uh, have you guys played played much Paper Popper? Uh, a little bit. Nope. Uh, Nicole? I've played it on MTGO. No. Yeah, I've done it go a little bit, but that's it. I'm trying to yeah. build a burn deck in Paper, but... So, I think I'm, in, I think I'm in the same boat as you guys, as I've made Popper decks, and I haven't played them. <laughs> I enjoy making the decks, because I just like going back to my older collections and pulling out those commons that, I, that I've enjoyed seeing or, or playing with in Limited back when they were in uh, the, the format to play, and kind of trying to build decks with them that could work. Um, and that's where I, th- I see kind of like a hamstring for this standard popper on Arena. The joy of popper is being able to use commons that are pretty powerful from across you know several different sets, uh, limiting it to only standard, I don't know how powerful the, the combined commons could actually be. Yeah, it seems yeah, like red would be the most powerful, just because, you know, it's such a limited pool and beatdown strategies are good in, like, you know, in most, like, limited type formats, and poppers kind of like that, kind of like seal a little bit. Red almost always gets, like, the most efficient removal at common, too. I mean, black gets the best removal, but it's usually uncommon for limited reasons, like murder. But you have shock and stuff like that at standard, so, it is, yeah, I think red would be good. Yeah, I could also see things... The other problem with a card pool that small is if they do print some really powerful common, like we had Thraben Inspector recently, right? Like, yeah. everyone was playing it in standard. It just seems like it would make every deck want to play that common. There would be no reason... So that's sort of a danger of, like, if they print too strong of a common again, one that is, like, a staple in standard, um, it could make a popper format like that a lot less uh, dynamic. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, we can already kind of sense the issues with a popper that's that's limited to standard-only cards. Uh, You're missing out on a lot of potential for kind of, like, dynamic deck building and, you know, mechanics that play off of one another. If you're if you're if you have such a limited pool to play off of, so I, I'm very curious to see how it pans out. But just like you guys, I think I'm I'm worried that it's going to be a, a format ruled by <laughs> as much as as many as only two decks. What's the best common in standard right now, Mike? Do you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if, you mean, to, if you had to throw one out there, I'm just I can't think of one. This is really but. more of a prince format right now. Like all the. Best Still, cards yeah. I can think of off the top of my head are rare or mythic. Um, That's what I was I mean, thinking too. Sh- shock. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> like honestly, shock. It's not even that great. Yeah, yeah. They, they I mean, it depends on the deck. Like, um, if you're talking, um, if you're talking, like you have that um, sacred cat, good in cat decks. But I mean, that's very limited and and for cat decks only, essentially. So that's a fairly yeah. strong common. Um, yeah, it is a strong common. It comes back. It's pretty good. I would say probably the Kenra. What's it? What's it called? Um, uh, it's the one, the that, one that you has can exert uh, and a creature can't block. Like that's one of the, you know, one of the key oh, it's, cards. It's in, uncommon though. Oh, oh, oh it's the, uncommon. The Minotaur? Oh, yeah, Minotaur. Yeah, the three mana three two with haste on crop crasher. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on crop crasher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uncommon, so you won't get that one. Maybe there's maybe maybe it will be interesting. I guess since this. As Mike pointed out, like, I, yeah, everything I was thinking of, too, was, like, uncommon, mythic, or rare. I mean, other than, again, shock. And, like, the one mana, one, one goblin who can sacrifice itself, which, again, is another really good common for red That deck. is a really to, good to, common, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, just thinking off the top of my head, common wise, um, it just feels like red is is it's red is fast. It has a bunch of haste creatures that are a little bit heavier, I think, that are at, at common still. Um, I mean, at the same time, green has ramp with Llanowar elves, so yeah, yeah that's true. Llanowar elves. You can get, you, know, you, can get, you can definitely do a green stompy kind of uh, popper deck uh, with yeah. colossal dreadmall and stuff like that. Yeah, Lana Whirls may be the best common in standard. Yeah. We just didn't think about it because it's held in check by the Chain Whirler in standard, so no one's exactly. playing it. But, but yeah, it could be interesting. Yeah, yes. honestly, I'm I'm gonna change my opinion right now. Definitely, Lana Whirls <laughs> is probably the best common. Well, what are your yeah. what are your ramp payoffs though with common? Uh, Colossal Dreadmall. Yeah, that's it. That's all you need, right? Well, kind of. I mean, it, it, of course, it's gonna die to a lot of common removal. But I mean, what else are you gonna? There's big creatures that you can ramp into, of course, but, I mean, it has trample, big body. That's not entirely yeah. true. It's not going to die to a lot of the removal of common, because I don't think they've even printed murder at common, have they? Yeah, they've no, printed it. It's, they've it's printed only it at common before, have they? Uh, before, well, yeah, guess, but it has but... to be it has to be in common now for oh, the, okay, okay. for what we're talking about. is standard oh, popper yeah. on Arena. I'm guessing it has to have been printed in standard at that rarity, so we're not going to be able to play like... Yeah. Yeah, I don't think, but... It's funny looking just, looking at uh, Nitahones or not um, looking looking at Mike playing Arena right now. I just saw two really good commons for Green Rabbit Bite and um, that two two for two uh, exert it give it plus one plus one I think or plus two plus two. Forgot what it was called. Oh yeah, it was from Amon um, or Hour of Devastation. Yeah, because I was looking. Uh, I think Green might just be the best choice because you also have Druid of the Cowl at common. So that's another. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you just go four of that, four of Llanowar Elves, and your big payoffs are, uh, let's see, uh, Colossal Dread Mob, Primordial Worm, 7 6. Uh, Riparian Tiger is probably still pretty good. I mean, if you can get some kind of energy sub theme going. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, Seems like, there's uh, plenty, that's for sure. The angel that's in uh, Corset 2019 that pumps the whole team and gives it vigilance, the 5-mana 3-3 seems like it Oh, when it comes be, into play? Yeah, like yeah. that seems... It's not strong enough for normal constructed, but in pop or something like that, I mean, it's crazy and limited. It's crazy, going to be crazy if... Like, if you can just curve out a white weenie deck and play that on turn 5, like... A lot of decks it's, it's actually so <laughs> looking at the looking at the cards that are in common and in, in the pool like i'm thinking it might be actually kind of hard unless you're going red to make a monocolor deck yeah yeah um, that's true you don't have a huge pool yeah. at, le- at least of a monocolor deck that where the cards actually like play off of one another you know vampires might actually be decent there's no, that's true a decent amount of you've got uh, oh, that's some pretty good you. common uh, common Seems zombies too for uh, black white, like kind of like a black white control zombie deck. Seems yeah, like most of zombie. the payoffs are uncommon or higher though. That's well, you have true. that one yeah. common zombie that when a when a un, when a zombie comes into play, taps a creature or something like that. Yeah, that's not. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm just I'm just trying to think of commons that do more than yeah. just are just a, a stat, you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. No, it's hard. It's it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I think. Since we're, th- you know, I, at first I was thinking it wouldn't be as dynamic, but then when I started to think about what the good commons are right now, I think we'll see a lot of cards get to see play in this new format that just wouldn't see play otherwise. So yeah, that, um, it, it actually it's actually funny because just like watching Mike go through some of the commons, at first in my head I was just like red, red, red. It's got to be red. But I mean, there's very good commons across all the colors that you can definitely experiment with. Yeah, like Epicure of Blood could be a win condition. Uh, That's true. From yeah. the set, and you got Anointed Deacon at uh, Common Sea that can pump vampires, and you know, Lifelink seems oh. pretty good in Popper, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like Black, you do have Hand Hate, which is good, but it's probably going to be quick Popper, so you don't get sideboard cards necessarily. Probably. Uh, black Aggro could actually be pretty decent because you got stuff like Supernatural Stamina uh, and uh, Grasping Scoundrel. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that... No, that one Vampire Conquist store isn't uncommon, but uh, you've got, like, Dund Operative. Uh, uh, Child of the Night's actually pretty I mean, probably Doom pretty Descender's decent. not bad. Dusk Legion Zealot. I can Zealot. see, like, a... Dusk Legion Zealot's going to be a pro 
for sure. Oh yeah, yeah that's definitely. gonna be really good. Yeah, the the uh, Dunda operative makes me wonder if there's like a common blue black artifact deck or something because there are a lot of artifact payoffs that common in those colors and standard right now. Yeah, but... yeah, you're right. There's a lot of great common <laughs> artifacts too. Ooh, vicious offering. That's probably one of the best removal spells at common. Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah I forgot about that one. Yeah. For sure. All right. Well, so Popper is going to be something that's definitely going to see a lot of experimentation. I, I'm I'm excited to play it because I just I haven't had the chance to play it in paper at, at my LGS personally, but I've always been super interested in it. But the other potential new format to come to Arena is Momir Vig. Now, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't play MTGO. I've, I never really have. Um and so that's a, that's a format I have just never experienced, and I really don't even understand it. So I'm actually going to lead it to Nicole to actually run down the rules <laughs> and explain it to me in a way that I can understand because, you know, I'm, you know, a little bit on the slower side when it comes to format. So if you could, Nicole, just break it down for me. All right, I'll give it a shot and we'll see how well this engineer can explain it. <laughs> so Momir Vig is a format where your deck is entirely made up of lands. That's it. Excuse Only me? Only lands. Yeah, your yep. whole deck is lands. Basic ones, even. Yeah, just lands. It's great. Can, can, can they be full art? Yes, they can be full art. Okay. Of course. Okay. All right, then, we, then we, we, got, we got something cooking. Anyway, yeah. what? what? <laughs> so you have this deck full of lands, and you get your seven cards, and you draw. Um, and in MTGO, they do it as an avatar. Mm-hmm. And so you have this avatar that has this ability where... You can um, pay X mana, discard a land, and you get a creature uh, with that converted mana cost. Random. Random. A random yeah. creature. Across okay. all of magic. Okay. On Mitgo. So they're, I'm, I'm going to assume they're going to have to limit it to standard. I, uh, I assume they're only going to have standard Momir Vig, I guess. Okay. Well, Nicole, thank you for breaking it down. And yes, I understand it. You kind of threw me off when you said all lands for a second, but I get it now. <laughs> so this is a format you can't yeah. play in paper. You you can. People have tried, and yeah. you can, but it's it's hard. They yeah. just have like piles of every converted mana cost like shuffled flip, and flip just like upside down. One. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, it's that way be, harder to play in paper, though. Yeah, yeah. That's super labor intensive. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to go through that, but this is really cool. Um, just hearing that, uh, it's, it reminds me of Hearthstone. I mean, who wouldn't think yeah. of Hearthstone right off the bat? Um, Sounds like a tavern brawl. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, random fun. Uh, I just hope it doesn't cost a lot to play. Like, it doesn't cost a lot of gems or something to play. Yeah, that would be sad. I wouldn't uh, imagine it would, but... Me either, but... I mean, I've been kind of disappointed at, at like how much some of these... Uh, more fun kind of formats cost. <laughs> I, I honestly wish they were just free. Um, I, I imagine it shouldn't cost too much. Like probably gold, I would imagine, because they're these are yeah. like rotating format. So like, I, I would think it's just a bit of gold, and then you get probably pretty close to your money's back. I would think if you get a couple yeah. wins. So, isn't the but, plan that these will be only out like on the weekend too, or something like that? The the uh, Hopper and the Momer. I don't wrong? like that. Why can't they just have them yeah, out all the time? I think so. So that's I, one of the I things that I'm not I'm not enjoying from Arena so much. I can understand how they want to have special events and, and, and things of that nature, but if I find something that I really enjoy, if it rotates out, I'm it makes it makes the it, it makes the experience less enjoyable for me. Like I just wanna if I find something I enjoy, just let me play that forever. Agreed. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. And it's the, it, it's the same with like the rotating um, limited uh, cycles. You know how the right now it's drafting Amon Cats, and of course you can always draft M nineteen on competitive. But sometimes you want to draft you know Dominaria, but that's not available right now. You have to wait like what a week or something to to draft maybe Dominaria again. They should just have it always be Dominaria and Corset twenty nineteen right now. That's just me. But they have research. I mean, it'll be. They haven't talked about limited a whole lot in the when they've talked about arena, like how how many how much it's firing. Like they talked about competitive constructed never firing. So I guess these other limited formats that rotate, like Amonkhet and Ixalan, must people must be playing them. But 
Uh, yeah, I don't know why personally, but that's yeah. just me. Uh, but <laughs> that, that's a that's a really good point that you brought up, though. And another thing that we should probably talk about in regards to arena, and that being the end of they're they're removing the competitive constructed. Uh, yeah, yeah. they're only one of the queues. Like one of the queues will still be active for that. Um, but they are removing. Um, uh, yeah, like the general competitive constructed. Uh. I think the one that costs gems is going away, which are yeah, which is fine by me because it's actually not very valuable right now, <laughs> to be totally honest. Yeah. Like so a lot of a lot of the people that I saw kind of putting their two cents in. Uh well personally, let me just say right now, I never played it. Uh it just took way too much time. And that was a complaint that I saw it echoed by a lot of people that it was a huge time investment for very little reward. Yep. That yeah. was my feeling too. So it's kind of comes off as kind of lazy to not tweak the prize but just remove the whole thing um yeah yeah i I really don't see why they just don't have all formats open like it seems like they could totally fit it into the interface so i know they don't want to like give people choice paralysis because that really is a thing like you know know, yeah i agree even though some people are fine with it like other people just panic and then they're like oh i don't can't figure out what to play i guess i'm gonna hop off but that just seems like such a cop out to me (laughs) to i agree maybe their servers can't handle so many formats i don't know (laughs) They they, they did a stress test and they got a bunch of people in there so i assume they definitely can it did not take them very long to break everything, though. Yeah, they crashed yeah, pretty that's fast. True. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, I mean, hey, it comes out in like two months. Let's, uh... <laughs> no, it's no. There's no. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's <laughs> slated to come out in two months. Sorry. Well, like I've said before, they better because <laughs> I think it's going to really hurt if they don't. Two months. Well, you guys know, if you guys know anything about indie games on Steam that, that are, uh, in beta testing, you know, some just never come out of beta testing. They're just beta testing forever. Yeah, this is an indie game, though. Like I know. <laughs> I'm just, just saying. Like it's, it. un, it's a very unfair comparison I'm making. Um, but if they have to extend it, I mean, you're going to see people upset, but probably not too much. They haven't no. even introduced limited pods yet, which they've said they want to do. So if they want oh, to yeah, do they that. they haven't even tested it. Yeah, so that's that's what one thing, you know, obviously that's what I care about the most. And that's one of the reasons that I'm not super interested in Arena, although I mean, I've played it some, is that drafting against AI when I'm like trying to, you know, uh, practice drafting or help people get better at drafting. You know, the AI is not terrible or anything, but I just feel like it's a realer experience if I'm drafting against actual people. It's better. It's a better educational experience for me and the people watching my videos than no, if yeah. I'm drafting against an AI that they're not going to draft against at their LGS. But so I yeah. think that that's, that's the big thing that they haven't done yet that they've said they want to do. If they hadn't said they wanted to do it, I may just think they're going to stay with AI forever, which maybe they will. I mean, we'll just have to see. Yeah, but they definitely have expressed that they want to test it. Uh, I can understand their concerns because they definitely want to make this a game where you can hop on, hop off whenever you want, uh, much like Hearthstone and, and unlike uh, some experiences in MTGO. Uh, yeah, but the, yeah. They, they could just do it like a league on MTGO, though, where you draft in a pod, but then you play in a league. You don't necessarily play against the same people you drafted with, which yeah. I do think is a purer experience. But if if they want to hold on to the hop on, hop off, but also have pods, they already have a model for that on Magic Online, which is the, the leagues. Yeah, and I agree with you 100%. Uh, and I think keeping away from uh, like drafting against AIs takes away one of the crucial kind of components to limited play, which is like counter picking figuring out what your opponents are drafting on the, on the other side of you you know stuff like that which i think is a really interesting component to limited play uh, but at the same time i think they're trying to tackle with at least my thought is they're trying to tackle the idea of people falling out mid-draft like in, during the picking well yeah counter drafting hasn't mattered for a while unfortunately because leagues just kind of ruined that um, oh really yeah because when you play I mean, a league hey- on mtgo you just face whoever after you draft so to be fair hate drafting has an incredibly minimal effect anyway and people shouldn't be doing it just to (laughs) throw that out there (laughs) but i mean it does matter sometimes sometimes you'll be like at the end of a pack and like there's a very playable common left and you're you know pass it to the person to your left and you don't want them to get like this solid playable card so yeah you take it and yeah it doesn't matter anymore because of leagues but it does matter to a degree like you can send signals 
uh, sometimes you can really think about it and find ways to really indicate to your opponent, you know, what you're playing by cutting certain colors or by maybe sometimes you're like really deep into two colors already and you don't want them to go into it. And, you know, you, there's a there's a choice between a really good off color card and a really good card in one of your colors already. And the choice is easier because you can sort of give your opponent a signal that this color's open. You're not in it when you pass yeah. them like a lightning strike or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's so the 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 hate hate drafting thing has been irrelevant on Magic Online for a while now because of leagues. But uh, there's the human experience. I think is still just going to be better though than than drafting against um, uh, AI. Right. I, I'm not even sure exactly how the AI operates when it's drafting. Like, does it kind of stick to a color and always tries to pick within those colors, or like, does it? How does it value cards when it when it opens a pack? Like that kind of thing. Oh, they clear. Yeah, and it's it gets complicated when there's seven other AIs drafting, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> that yeah. it's like. Well, the way they claim it works is that you know they take all the data of picks from MTGO, and basically they feed that to the AI to tell it like the pick order, basically, of the pack. Right. So then so when it, you it, pick something, then the AI says, "Okay, this is what's left in the pack," and mm-hmm. kind of. Yeah, you know, like they made made a very basic like if and or you know kind of logic to it, where it's like okay, so right. they took the rare. That means I should take this, and then because I picked this first, that means I should take this card next. But uh, as I discussed with Nitsahon, like it doesn't feel very natural. Like I end up with really weird decks compared to when the other day I just hopped on MTGO because I was like, oh, I got a bunch of extra tickets. So I'm I'm gonna try to you know, draft on there. Um, it was way different. Like I got much better decks on MTGO than I did on arena. And I don't know if that's just confirmation bias or, you know, if it is something to do with the way the, uh, the AI works on arena, but either way, like it just seemed different than that. I've seen people bizarre. complain that it, the one thing that it really does, it, uh, the AI is it cuts, it cuts colors really hard to the point that it, it's not willing to pivot as much as a human would if they open a certain bomb. Like I've seen like really experienced limited players tweet about that. I mean, I haven't played it enough to have seen that myself. I've done like two drafts on Arena. Um, I'm going to do more here soon. But uh, so, you know, I've seen people complain about the AI in multiple ways and play a lot of limited. So I think, you know, pods are the future, hopefully. Yeah. Oh, hopefully. Well, there's a lot of changes for Arena. Hopefully they're good. I'm really interested in Popper and Momer Big now that Nichols kind of explained it to me. So we'll definitely keep uh, keep that in mind as we're moving forward and give our initial impressions of them once they go live, whenever they decide to put those live. All right. So I think we're going to move on to our next topic, which is probably going to be our last topic of the, the of the podcast here. And that is new comics being released for Magic the Gathering. So comics, if you guys remember, uh, I think they were around like core set 14. I think they were they were centered around. Anyway, yeah, they Magic the Gathering had comic book series out for a while. They were all published by IDW. Uh, and it looks like they're making a return, even though just not, re- not, not too long ago, like just before Dominaria, uh, they released a whole uh there's some big old changes to how they're going to address the story and the lore for the game. Uh, it looks like they're changing it up again when introducing comic books. Can we talk about how no other comic will be as good as this first one is because the character is just the best in all of lore? <laughs> so you have a bias. This is true. You love Chandra. And the first topic is going to be about Chandra. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm excited too, just because the cover art that they released for it is actually amazing. If and they if get it, prints for that, it's going up on the wall with the rest of the genre yeah, prints. It makes me super excited because one of the main things that I don't like too much about the articles is, I mean, they they read just like you know a page out of a book, which is fine. Like you know, you want to get your your story just from text. That is completely fine, and I'm 100 percent behind that. I've read the novels. I enjoy the novels. If they made novels again, I would like that too. Uh, but I do feel like they lacked a certain depth to them because, I mean, it is just like you're reading a bunch of just small, like just a bunch of paragraphs in a row with a few pictures thrown in there. I'm not saying that a comic book's better than just reading a straight book, but for me in my action oriented brain, I like to see the pictures. I mean, magic is a 
art is a big thing in magic and to not have that as I mean they, they try really hard to intertwine that art in with the story as much as possible but there's only so much you can do so I, I mean, think comics are going to be great yeah on average I think their articles have like five of the of the card art sprinkled in there amongst the paragraphs um, I'm not I'm not uh, poo pooing like just books in general because like I've read the novels and I thought the novels were completely fine um, but I think comic books are just that little extra thing that they that they kind of need in the course of a, a block's life to add not only more context, but a little bit more, I don't know, pizzazz to the story. Because right now, I mean, a lot of people don't like reading the story and I, I don't blame them. Being able to hand this to my kid and be like, here's... Here's this, you know, you're still little, you can't read a novel yet, but you can look at pictures and see that. Uh, we're going to have so much fun together. It's going to be great. Yeah, and I think comic books, you know, I, I, it would be interesting to see the statistics last time I did it, but there's, a, I think, at least some potential to bring in new people who just see the comic book. People, there's some people who just read all the new comic books, you know, and that's one way they could get exposed uh, mm-hmm. to magic is through the lore first, which is almost never going to happen otherwise because of the way they release uh, the lore. You know, it's on the Magic the Gathering website. It's not just like at your local comic book store or bookstore or whatever. Yeah, yeah, they don't even do like EPUBs or anything like that anymore. No, and that, that was actually a great point that you, you brought up, Nitz. Um, just the fact that, uh, that a lot of LGSs also have comic book stores kind of like inner... inner intertwined with them at least my my old lgs was a comic book store slash game store that i play magic at uh certainly not all of them since i've moved i've actually found a new lgs that is simply just a game store but i do know that a lot of them have comic books as well uh so that could that could definitely introduce a lot of new people that are going there for comic books see it on the shelf pick it up say what is this and then hey the same place that they're buying this comic book store uh comic book at is also hosting Magic the Gathering. So it could be an easy way to get new customers in the door. The other question is, will there be promo cards? There were last time. (laughs) There were. IDW, they did have promo cards in the comic books. I don't know. I honestly don't know if they're going to go that route or not. I think it would be a cool idea, as so long as they're not like, you know, buy a box promo. Comic book <laughs> exclusive, <laughs> mythic oh rares. Oh my god, people's heads would actually explode. <laughs> you know what I'd be happy with? If they reprinted cards with just comic book art on it. Oh my I god, that, that would be, be sick. so cool. Like yeah, the and- Chandra Torch Defiance, but with that cover art on it. That would be absolutely awesome because if the cover art for the new Chandra comic is any indication what the art's going to look like, like basically across the board for all these IDW kind of publications. That's going to be sick looking. Like it's, it's seriously going to be beautiful. Get that framed with a print, the comic book, the card, all in one beautiful frame hanging on the wall. Exactly. And for those of you guys who are interested in the story aspect of the comic books, I do know that they've, released kind of like a small blurb of what it's going to be about and that it's actually going to be set in the future of the current like story uh these are supposed to be coming out in the fall i believe is yes, that like no later release date? yeah so the story of the comic books starting with chandra is going to be set in the near future as they call it and chandra is going to experience some uh epic tragedy I think involving her family because they indicated her family quite a bit in the little blurb. Uh, and she's going to have to go on some epic adventure facing a similar, a familiar old threat that we're not, uh, we're, we're not given the name to, uh, to in figuring out like what happened to her family. Does that mean she's going back to Kaladesh? Is that where it's said? Well, her parents are in Kaladesh, but I assume her that... Her mom f- is in Kaladesh. Her, dad's her mom dead, and her man. father is, dad's is dead. deceased. If yeah. this means yeah. her mom dies, I'm really reconsidering renaming my child. <laughs> no, that's a good, so, that's a good yeah. point. <laughs> I don't... It doesn't say... It doesn't say what happens. It just says it is a, a, a tragedy, and, you know, for her family, she has to go do like, find somebody or something. So not, obviously mean, not a wonder. Mm-hmm. It could also mean we see some preview of how her storyline will overlap in one of the future three Ravnica sets or something, too. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping that. Well, 
let me just say that since it's the near future, I'm assuming that this is after Ravnica's because because Chandra's already on Ravnica. She ain't making a pit stop to her home and then doing some adventure before she deals with Nicol Bolas. That's yeah, that's maybe. probably not going to happen. But uh, I'm assuming it's r- shortly after Ravnica, um, which is you know kind of a spoiler because we find out that at least Chandra doesn't die, which I think Yay. Nicole would actually boycott the company at that point. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, uh, like, that's not a lot of information, guys. Uh, the comic books look sick. That's all I can really say on them. I loved the comic books when they came out for the last course that they, they were printed for. I can't really recall, but I thought they were they were sweet. I bought a few of them. I was already a huge Magic fan, so <laughs> they didn't need to convince me to buy them too much. But hopefully it brings more uh, more interest to the game itself. And hopefully it just gives more people another avenue to, to read up on the lore. Um, I'm, you know, obviously I'm really big on it. So when I see a a legendary card, I instantly wonder what is this related to how, like, you know, I'm looking at a card for a black blade reforged that is in a video on it. You know, what's its history? What's, what's its significance? What can it be used for in the future? You know, all these kind of questions pop into my head, but that is not the same for the average player. Maybe if they see something more visually enticing, like a comic book, They'll pick it up and then start to ask those questions themselves. Yeah, definitely. Because, <clears throat> you know, I'm one of those people for sure. <laughs> yeah. Like the story is not huge for me, so it would be just another cool avenue to check that kind of stuff out. I mean, let's and let's let's be real here for one minute. Like, obviously, the story is not the biggest component to Magic the Gathering. It never was. It never will be. But Wizards of the Coast clearly want to push some kind of multimedia property involving Magic the Gathering. They've indicated it. They've said it. They want to do it. Everything wants to go in that direction. As of right now, though, go ahead. I was just going to say, of all of Hasbro's, like, toy brands, uh, most of them are multimedia properties. I think Magic is one of the few, like, of the really successful big ones they talk about in their investor meetings a lot that is just basically one thing, you know? Yeah. And I mean, that's the whole push for Magic the Gathering Arena. They really wanted to branch out and make sure that they can have a digital version of the game that that becomes successful and brings new players in. And I think this comic book, I think the comic books are, are, are testing the waters to see if they can get people into the story more. Because like Nitsuhon said, right now, you can only find the, the lore in specific articles on the Magic the Gathering website. You ain't going to you ain't going to grab a bunch of random people to to. You ain't going to be able to bring them there and have them read that and be invested in it. It's just not going to happen. You're going to have to find a way to branch out the story, which a movie would definitely be based off of, to a more broad audience. Yep. <laughs> wow. I see. Whether, I need to get, whether I need we'll to get ever see a movie, friends. who knows? Who knows if we'll ever see a movie? They, they've been, they've said like they've it. Been, they've been saying it for years. Yeah. I feel like there was and even a poster out at one point and nothing ever no came There was no poster, up. but there were... I believe they they hired a director, not a director, maybe a writer, uh, to kind of like um, do a mock screenplay or something like that. I, there was some information on it uh, a while ago. Seems difficult to convert into a movie. Like I think you'd have to focus on like one Planeswalker's story to really make it work. You're not going to be able to like. I mean, I guess you could do the Brothers War or something too, something that's really self-contained. But there's just oh, it's just no, no, so no. complex, you know. My sweet summer child needs a home. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh, I mean, the whole reason for the Gate Watch. It's it the was, Avengers. Exactly, the they Avengers. wanted to make uh, just like a palatable team that they can focus stories around, not only for the game, but for some kind of media expansion they need right but it's it's difficult if you you know what dc tried to do is jump into that uh team up movie too quickly and it didn't go very well you they're not going to be able to just like be like look here's the gate watch everyone cares about them in one movie they're gonna have to set up the characters one way or another you can't just have the gate watch formed yeah and have a good movie i don't think unless it's like five hours long <laughs> so first off, I would watch a five hour long Magic the Gathering movie, one hundred percent. Split it into three parts, call it a trilogy. <laughs> See, and that's the thing, like I know exactly what you're talking about in terms of DC and Marvel. I'm a huge comic book fan, I'm a huge Marvel fan, and of course me being a Marvel fan, I want to like DC, but DC obviously did a, a poor job kind of executing 
what they wanted to imitate Marvel's kind of trajectory, but they jumped into it too quickly when Marvel had, what, a decade to build up to Avengers or something like that? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, so obviously Magic does not have that kind of time. They can't release Chandra 1 or Jace uh, Balaran 1, the movie, you know? They can't do it like Iron Man did. You know, Iron Man started it all. Right. What are they going to release? Gideon Jorah, Magic the Gathering movie 1. No, that would that would ne- that would <laughs> fail so quickly. So they they would have to do something similar to DC and just hope the name brand carries it, which I don't think that's actually enough because no, DC yeah. has way more way more clout way like just more name fans, brand and like that and, and it didn't work it's still there tanked. so. Yeah. Um and I'm sorry, there's just too many people who look at Magic the Gathering as nothing more than a card game. Which could have literally no story to it, and they wouldn't care. They wouldn't care. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I wouldn't care too much. <laughs> See, and that's and that's where and that's when you just go into like, it's a super risky venture. I honestly think they should start. They should go do a Netflix anime. To be completely oh honest, gosh, Netflix is a good idea. Yeah, I dude, just do a Netflix general. anime. Do not do it with real with uh with real actors, please. That would be just the cringiest thing on the planet. Just make it an anime. Just it'll be it easy an- for everyone. Oh my gosh, that would be so amazing. Like, come on. If if you guys, if Wizards of the Coast is listening to me, which I very much doubt, but if I could suggest anything to them, if I can go in there, roll in there with a suit to their board and just be like, guys, just do a Netflix show. I would definitely just say that. Yeah, I think a series would definitely be better because then you just have the... Uh... Yeah, you could have the classic monster of the week format, you know, <laughs> like any yeah, kind of I mean, like uh, supernatural, you know, type show or or, you know, uh, X-Files a little more common. But uh, I, yeah, you just have the Gatewatch go out. Oh, there's a disturbance in the multiverse. Uh, Gatewatch <laughs> assemble, you know, and then they go. Yeah. Solve some kind of magical thing. And then Bolas is always in the background going, yes, yes. <laughs> They're falling for my plan, well, you know, and they can I just, don't know if you guys watch. I don't know if you guys watch a lot of Netflix. I know I can speak for me and my fiance that we've basically watched everything available on that on that site for like we that's all we do in our in our spare time essentially. So uh Netflix has proven to be, at least to us, a format where they can have very successful long running shows. I mean Marvel's done it. I don't know if you guys have seen the Castlevania um anime that they hosted on Netflix that like they premiered on, on Netflix but it was amazing and as I was watching the Castlevania kind of um, Netflix show I was thinking man if they just did this exact same thing but with magic characters it would probably be an okay hit <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it depends on how many people you can get to watch it but I would I would certainly enjoy it and I think it would be a, a, a pretty good fantasy anime you know yeah Castlevania yeah, one's I mean, cool I, think- I like that one I think Netflix sounds like a good idea. So there you go, Wizards. That's your that's your freebie. <laughs> All right. So I think we're going to wrap up this week's podcast. But first, uh, Nicole, I think you want to give us our channel spotlight. Yes. So Jungle Fiverr is an, uh, mostly he does Twitch streams, but he also has a YouTube channel. Um, but he does a lot of modern janky brews. Um, that are so much fun to watch and just see him play with them and he tweaks them as he goes and it's great. But he also recently did a Magic the Cake and Eats section where he made a Plains cheesecake and it looked so good. And if you know me and my cakes, I was excited to see someone else make a cake. Was the flavor plain? No, it was a <laughs> vanilla and I believe he did a lemon curd. Yep. On it. You can see First it if you're watching really video version right now. Out of all of the chef terminology in the word, oh, in the world, curd is definitely my favorite word. That's a great <laughs> word. Just, just, uh, just throwing it out there. But, but Nicole, I gotta ask you something. What are you? Are you nervous that this cakening is encroaching on your territory? This competition <laughs> is too much. I, I can't eat all the cake in the world. <laughs> I don't own cake. No one can own the deliciousness that is cake or cheesecake. That's so. true. It is a it is a gift for the world. Exactly. That is for sure. And if we can get know. more people ma- eat, making and eating cake, I, I will have done my job. Just so you guys know, my sister is actually an acclaimed baker who worked oh. at Charm City's Cakes. Oh, what? I don't know if you guys have the show on 
on the the cooking channel. Uh, I don't know if it's still a show, but Charm City Cakes. Uh, that is a rest. That is a, a bakery in Baltimore, and my sister worked there. What? As a cake decorator, more so than an actual baker. But she's got skills. Cool. Oh my god! I before I before I get off, or sometime in the future, I need to show you guys a cake that she made for me and my brother's birthday one time. Oh, it was an exact replica of a KFC chicken bucket. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Complete with. Chicken pieces at the top that you could remove made out of Rice Krispie treats. Oh, yeah, that's fun to do. <laughs> it was actually amazing. Seems like your brain would be kind of confused by the chicken Rice Krispie. It, it actually, it actually <laughs> was like you would expect like salty and savory, but no, it was all sweet. That's pretty cool. What's that guy's yeah. name on that show? I forget what his name is. The uh, I don't know. See the Ace of Cakes guy? Or no, that's. Oh. Uh, no, you that might be thinking show. of uh, Cake Boss. Yeah, 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 the guy with the the thick New York accent. What was it called again? I think his name is Buddy Velasco. Duff? Is that his name? Oh, Duff. <laughs> Duff. Duff Goldman. This guy. See, I oh, was okay. Gonna... Okay, there is no, there's no such thing as a, as um. As like chef celebrities, there's only Guy Fieri impersonators. Oh, you can believe Guy that Fieri. if you want to. <laughs> Wait, you guys don't. You guys aren't into Guy Fieri. I actively <laughs> loathe him. Actually, oh, at least is, the content he, he creates. I don't loathe him That's as a person. Okay. I, I I have I don't watch a lot of cooking shows. I just know he bites into stuff and he just like moans. Ugh. I just and he's like I'm Guy Fieri, you know. It's just it's, it's just what he sounds that's like a, all the that's time. That's that's literally what he sounds like. I mean, I've actually <laughs> yeah. seen things recently. He's actually a good person, but okay, well, I'm that glad doesn't he's change the fact he's a bad person. That doesn't change the fact that he is just has zero sense of style. And first off, his hair makes him a bad disgusting. person. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're all we're all tiptoeing around it. Let's just say it as it is. All right, his hair is gross. Yep. <laughs> well, guys, that was a good. That was a good into the story. He's fifty years old. Oh, jeez. At least. Yeah. Oh, he, he is definitely is going to on, on the nose. He just compare good. him. Just compare him to someone like Anthony Bourdain. May he rest in peace. That like the quality of that sort of travel uh, cooking kind of show is like ten billion times better than anything Guy Fieri will ever do. Sorry, Guy Fieri. I will, well, I, I, okay. I will say Anthony Bourdain's show was actually amazing. I watched it. Yeah quite often well, and like i didn't treat it as like a cooking show so much because it really wasn't it was more like uh just like a travel kind of like a, it's a travel exploration culture show. thing where food is like half the show yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but he, he, he definitely he definitely he had style like he had a real style yep so i gotta at least well now that we're talking about the celebrity chefs uh, I, think <laughs> can, I think that's a good place to end the podcast uh if Probably. you guys want to just uh uh just give a shout out to your own channels real quick uh, Nitsahone, you can start. Okay, yep. Uh, Nitsahone Magic. I do a draft video every Monday and Thursday and a top 10 list every Friday. This week I did Prowess. Next week I'll be doing Flying, which means I get to go through about 2,000 cards, so I should probably get started soon. <laughs> so Stormcrow, number one, gotcha. Uh, Nicole? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, what about you? Um, you can find me at Bad Wolf MTG. This, tonight I'm going to be starting making my mint forest cake. So that should Ooh. be hopefully up on Monday or Tuesday, depending on what happens with it. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens there. And hopefully I'll be starting to put out some arena gameplay videos. And if you ever start a Patreon, your oh, and rewards if I ever are, start a Patreon, yeah. Your rewards are going to be a slice of cake mailed to everybody. <laughs> oh, jeez. If, from the, if from I the, could figure the, out how to do that. <laughs> Direct that's like in, a fifty dollar. That's like a fifty dollar donation. No, no, thing. no, no. Just no. You just take some and you jam it into an envelope, ship it USPS. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Everyone gets a slice. All right. And I'm Mike, and my channel is Mythic Tales, and I might actually have an animation out this week. So yeah. Anyway, of course I'm Simon. You guys can catch my channel on the the Ether Hub. Uh, you can always follow us here on Twitch as well at twitch.tv slash the Ether Hub to catch our podcast whenever we go live. Usually on Thursdays, sometimes. In other days, but you know, you guys can always catch us here, so make sure you hit that follow button if you want to catch us when we're live. And of course, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>